Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can. Safely close your eyes. And it is Thursday. It's Thursday, everybody. I've got no idea what day it is. What day is it? Thursday, the 23rd of January. It's one minute past one. You know, it's really weird. Earlier, my friend said to me, what's the time? I looked at my, my uh, phone and I said, oh, it's uh, eight minutes past two. And he said, what? And he looked at his and he said, no, it's two minutes past eight. So basically, <laughs> I read the clock as in 08, 02. So eight minutes past two. So there you go. I think. Or 20 past two. Anyway. Now that was boring. What a boring start. These, res- these sessions are usually really interesting. So what's the latest? Well. The latest for me is I have yet again no one knows how long for but I have uh, taken my website offline I've also I'm not on Facebook or Twitter at the moment so I've uh, deleted those Facebook and Twitter or deactivated what else have I done? Um, I've also taken the adverts off of the podcasts, so there's no longer any adverts on them. Uh, yeah, that's it. And there's that bit of cleaning up that I've had to do to change the podcasts so that it suit, you know, that it kind of all. Um, well, basically, I put some titles that I had to change due to this so yeah why do you do that JJ you may ask why do I do anything I'm always doing something and I there's a this weird one really I've got this well part of the reason is I've got this real emotional reaction to charging for what I do even though it's still free you can still stream the audios podcasts are still there all that stuff but to charge for downloads I've had a couple of people download stuff I need like two or three but it just doesn't feel right. I'm not feeling it. I'm really not feeling it. So, and I took the and also the adverts on the podcast. Uh, I know I've had quite a few complaints over those in the past. So. I thought, nah, I'll get rid of them. You know, I've had them on there for a day, really, or two days, and with the adverts, I'm probably averaging about eight dollars a day uh, in revenue from the adverts, based on. About three and a half thousand downloads a day, which is kind of what I get now on average on the 
on the podcasts. You know, get about three and a half thousand downloads. Sometimes it's four thousand plus. Sometimes it's three thousand two hundred. You know, but it's it seems to not go below the three thousand now. And that's if I make just one record in a day. If I do more than one record in a day, because I've got three or well, four podcasts, different podcasts where I make different types of recordings then I'll get a lot more um, downloads so based on that I could probably I was moving towards a $10 a day but even $8 a day I, I don't know what that works at, at 30 days times by 10 is $300 and um, times by 8 so what's that 8 three eighties isn't it really so 80 90, 100, 120, so 8, 16, 24, so $240, which in pounds would be about $140, so that $240, uh, probably 180 pounds, maybe 170 pounds, something like that. Because our dollar to pound ratio is really bad. We our the money in my country is really low compared to America. Your the dollar's a little, hell of a lot stronger. We're one of the lowest. Uh, but it's very it's very weak. The pound's very weak at the moment. But I still love it. You got to look after weak weak things, haven't we? We got. Got to take care of them, so I'm taking care of the pound. Um, so yeah, I've got rid of those, even though the adverts would cover the costs of running the service. But I wanna, I wanna run a, a service that is useful for everyone, as many people as possible. Um, so I've taken the adverts back off. And to be fair, it was quite nice to have a little experiment because I was interested in kind of what, how much I'd be getting a day if I was to have the adverts on there. And I got a little, I said it was a little experiment, but it's just over eight dollars a day. So yeah, it's uh, it would cover the cost of running things but yeah anyway I've decided not to have the adverts on there maybe in future um, if there comes a time when I can't run this service you know not that it's, it's not hugely expensive really but the the podcast costs about $77 a month that's the cost of running the podcast, you know, the with Spreaker. I think it's fifty something pound a month. I got the I can't believe it, I got paid yesterday. And suddenly there was this big fifty pound missing or fifty four pound or whatever. It's like, why? Why where's that gone? And but that was the the direct debit for the the podcast and it was always I think it was about £30 before or no maybe $29 so it's gone up quite a bit but it's also unlimited so I can have as many recordings as I want on there without a limit because before my limit was 150 hours all in all and as you may be aware, I've mentioned it before, I've got over, I've got twice, over twice that in hours just on this podcast. That's about all the other thousand recordings I've got else, you know, on other podcasts. So, in the new year, or in, I don't know when I started this one, I think it was December, maybe November. So, but in the new year, then in a year's time, it's going to go up to over a hundred dollars a month. So, because they've given me a discount, so I'm hoping 
that they'll still give me a discount, but I don't know. We shall see, but I'm not going to think about that because it's 10, 10 months or 11 months away. Um, 10 months away, I guess. Yeah. Nine months? 10 months? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Because um, there was a point where I had to keep deleting stuff, like old recordings, um, in order to fit on new ones. But now I don't have to do that anymore, so that's good. So, the podcast fine for another month, and the website. Part of the reason I've deleted it or I've took it offline is because if I put it back online, first of all I've got to pay for it. And that's due soon, so I kind of I don't know if I've got enough to pay for that. But it's not just that, it's I've got to change everything again. I've got, I've got to go in and change everything back to being free. And uh, it's it's not a huge job. It's going to take it probably take a day. So it took me about two or three days to do it, or two days or whatever to to convert everything to. Well, yes, I suppose it'll take the same amount of time, won't it? It's the same process. So maybe a one or two days to change everything back. then it's done so yeah it was uh, not really sure what to do I'm kind of missing the website though hello Andre I don't know if you can get the the sound effects for this Hey. Hello, baby. Hello, baby boy. Mm. The good thing is I've always got him. I've always got him. He's asleep. He actually, when he goes for a wee-wee... He's almost walking blind. He bangs into things sometimes because he hasn't really got his eyes open because he's asleep. But he, he knows by direction or maybe by smell or whatever where to go. So he goes on the paper, goes to the corner of the room, he does a wee wee. And then he walks back to, to where he was sleeping before. And if I grab him, not only grab him, but if I pick him up, he's asleep. As he is now, he's fast asleep in my arms, like a little baby. And what's changed is, when I first picked him up, his heartbeat was racing. Now his heartbeat slowed down. So I can hear his breathing. It's like did you hear that? I don't know how uh, much of his sounds that the microphone picks up. The good thing about not having a website or being on Facebook is no one can complain. <laughs> they can say, oh, "I wish you'd stop uh, having that." Uh, Ferret yawning into the microphone. <laughs> One of the things he absolutely loves is having his ears tickled. So I stick my finger in his ear. I say I stick it in his ear. His ears smaller than my finger, so can't actually go into the ear, but he can like massage the inside 
bit of it, if that makes sense. And I realised that, well, it has to be a guess. It can only ever be a guess, but I think that the reason he likes it is because he can't get to that part of himself. He can't get to it with his tongue. He can't get to it with his nose. He can't get to it with his fingers because of his nails. If he was to start um, pushing his his nails into his uh, ear, he'd end up um, hurting himself. So uh, the only other thing he's got is to kind of rub himself against something, I guess. And what he does is when I do put my finger near his ear, he pushes against it. He's doing it now, he's pushing against the ear, uh, pushing against my finger with his head so that my finger gets deeper into his ear. You really like that, don't you? You want the other one now. And sometimes he moves his head around so I can do the other one. I love you, Andre. I do. Oh, now he's doing, he's pushing his thing, head against that finger. And give me daddy kisses. You are my favorite little boy, you know that. You're my little baby. Yes, you are. Your daddy's little baby. I can't really take him out too much at the moment because of the cold weather. He doesn't like it. <laughs> he, he actually, if I take him out and I put him on the ground, he refuses to walk. And he, he literally makes me drag him, which I can't do on a pavement. I mean, it's just... Even though he can walk, he'd rather be dragged, which has got to be uncomfortable at the, at the least. You want to get down? Give me my kiss. Daddy kisses. Daddy kisses. <laughs> Do you want to get down and go to sleep? There you go. Oh, he wants to play now, he's awake. Basically, I've woken him up. Mind you, I suppose that, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Imagine if you walk into the toilet to go for a wee-wee and then some huge hand picks you up and starts stroking you and sticking his finger in your ear. And you're probably not going to be quite as tired as you were before. Sit on Dre, find the most noisy surface to sit on. That's it, he's a good boy. That's him, by the way, it's not me. <laughs> See, I don't know, I don't never really listen back to the recordings, so I don't know how much the, the gun. Say the camera. I don't know how much the microphone picks up him walking around. It was more of a run there, but he's he's not skinny. I mean, he's not he's not fat. He's got a strong body, you know. He's but it's very. He's got a double coat on at the moment. His, his fur or his his hair or his whatever you want to call it really nice it feels much nicer than it does during the summer and the colouring is colouring is beautiful I just I'm biased though aren't I? I just love him and he's really good now because when I'm in bed it doesn't bother me anymore I mentioned this the other day probably but I probably mentioned everything I've ever said at some point but he doesn't bother me. He goes, he he has a little play. Sometimes he'll jump up and come to sleep on my bed. But he doesn't hassle me like before he used to. He used to try and wake me up and he doesn't do that anymore. 
because now he knows he's got the whole place to himself. He no longer goes in a cage, which is what he used to do. Or I, you know, for the, I think he's only been out of the cage since the summer. Well, that might be more time. I mean, time goes quite quickly, doesn't it? Unless you're constipated. And time doesn't seem to go very quickly at all. Or having a prostate exam. I, you know, I'm just saying, generally, time goes quite quickly. Sometimes it goes too quickly. You know, you're waiting for a, waiting at the bank in a queue at a bank and you know that you have to get back to work in 15 minutes and you know it's a 15 minute walk and there's a an elderly person or a, or a young person but possibly on this for this story an elderly person asking lots and lots of questions because that's how banks used to be. It used to be a very friendly place, didn't it? And uh, and then next to them, there's another person that's, for some reason, wanting to exchange their piggy bank and have it all into bags and counted out. It's like, okay, yeah, great. And then next to them, there's the other person that's decided to go for lunch. Uh, and I was standing there. And that's a time where you'd like things to go slowly. But that clock, don't go slow. It starts going fast forward. <laughs> but what does go slow is the people at the counter and the people behind the counter are almost going in slow motion. How can I help you today? Well, first of all, I'd like to ask you about uh, my pension. I had a pension that I started paying into in 1946. Uh, 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 uh. Would you like a cup of tea while we discuss this? Oh, I thought, oh yeah, great. I'll tell you what, I'll make the cup of tea if it gets you moving quicker. Maybe put a few extra spoonfuls of sugar to get you going. Kickstart that adrenaline. So yeah, I um, I don't know how long it's been, but he's, he's he seems to like not being in the cage anyway. Never liked being in a cage, even though it really was only at bedtime, but also when he was being naughty, and I put him in a cage, and that's when he'd be rattling at it and just uh, really, you know, very unhappy. Mind I should know that he didn't like cages when I very first got him. And my friend gave me a wooden cage with, it was pretty more like a rabbit cage really, but it was a short term thing until I got a proper, you know, in a bigger cage for him. And I ended up getting him a Dulux one, not Durex, Dulux. Not like the paint, but um, it's got one, two, three, four levels, I think. It's basically like a really flashy apartment for him, but great for a ferret that never goes out or perhaps is only out for an hour a day to have that space in a cage, but that space in the cage means nothing compared to all the space outside the cage when he's got one, two, three, four rooms to play in.
four room, yeah. This room, kitchen, bathroom, the bedroom. Well, there's a fifth room, but that's a storage room. I don't let him in there. And there's the hallway as well. I mean, that storage room, it's a weird shape. But if it was long, like, it basically, it's like an L shape. But if it was... If it was long instead of L shaped, you could fit a bed in there. And but there's no there's no window or anything, so I wouldn't personally. Well, I mean you couldn't rent it out because that would be illegal. But I can't imagine it'd be very healthy to be sleeping in a room like that without any. I mean there is um, there's air. There is oxygen in there, but there's vents, there's two vents, so there's plenty of air getting in and out, so it can't get damp in there. But I think I'm thinking of maybe turning it into an office or something in the future, or maybe I don't know, something because it seems a shame to have that much space and not use it other than storage. And I've got stuff, I've got a wardrobe in there, which I don't even use. Well, it's in there, obviously, because I don't use it. And I moved it out of my bedroom because I've got, I've got um, clothes racks attached to the wall. I've got two, I'm going to get another two as well. And the, it's for anything that I put on a coat hanger. So that's trousers, jumper, anything. Any jumpers, t-shirts, shirts, everything that basically that I can put onto a coat hanger is all hanging up on those um, those bars which I've got attached to my wall. That's, that's what they're for. And get, get another two, and possibly another, another one, or maybe another two above the window so that I can dry off stuff um, like wet wet t-shirt wet t when I've had a wet t-shirt contest yeah now when I've done some washing so I don't have a tumble dryer but I do have a washing machine so what I do is I hang up the stuff spread it out and hang it up and let it dry uh, and I usually put it above the radiator so that it dries a bit quicker and I spread it out. I've got all the windows open, you know, or at least on the latch. I've got no, I've got no damp in this place at all. It's brilliant. That's one of the best parts of living here, really, is not having any damp. Because after the last place I lived in, ooh, it was mold and damp. It's just really not, not good. So you know, but I don't have. If I was to get a tumble dryer. I suppose I'd need to have it. Well, the only place I could have it would be in the storage room. Unless I moved the freezer into the storage room and had the tumble dryer where the freezer is. Uh, but I've been here five years or four years. No, it's getting on to five years. And I got the washing machine within uh, probably a couple of weeks, a week or two of moving in here. So it's all worked out fine. The clothes dry, they don't stink too bad. <laughs> they smell fine. Um, there's no dampness or anything. There are times, I shouldn't really say that, I mean, it's been occasions, not very often, not very often, the odd occasion where I've turned the heating on in the summer to dry some clothes. But that was like a, in an emergency situation when I had nothing to wear. So I had uh, me underpants and some socks and maybe, you know, on the, on the radiator drying so I could wear something to go out. But generally, you know, I wouldn't have the heating on in the summer. Uh, and also, when it's warm, 
the clothes dry a lot quicker anyway. You try and tell me that story was anything but boring. <laughs> Even I am realised, and I was telling you an interesting story. For me, that was interesting. Wow. Oh, the fridge has just stopped. I'm thinking about getting that. That is stuff you can put into your um, washing machine. Was it washing machines, leave log and with cow gone? That's it. Wow, I am affected by adverts. Washing machines, leave longer with cow gone. So I might get a cow gone, but I don't know. When I'm doing something new, I look at I don't don't enjoy it. Well depending on what it is, I suppose, but I kind of get a little bit, oh, is this working? Is this, you know, I don't like to, I'm okay with, I don't know what I'm at, I'm okay. I'm okay like online with that kind of stuff and um, apps on phones, although I don't really use, um, do much in the way of phone stuff really, other than, not that much at all. I've got, I've got, a, um, I've got a good phone, but it's it's old now. Had it for what three years, I think. So it's well out outdated, but it's an Apple, an iPhone, but it still works fine. It still works, you know, perfect as far as I'm aware, and the software gets updated automatically anyway. And I rarely make videos anymore, and the screen's a little bit scratched and stuff, but it does the trick. And also, it's got Bluetooth, so I can. <laughs> I've only just started using Bluetooth. I say only just, I mean the last probably five months, six months, maybe. Never used Bluetooth before. Didn't really understand it, so I was a bit scared of it. Didn't really get what it was about. And then I got um, some headphones, which use Bluetooth technology, which pretty much every headphones, well, they were wireless, so they're wireless headphones. Because the ones I had on a wire just kept falling out of my ears. I mean, I don't know if it's the way I walk or maybe the earlobes, the the craters in my ears are too big. I don't know what you call them, that, the whole bit. Um, is, how many holes do I have? I suppose the eyes are classed as holes, aren't they? Ears and nostril and mouth. What's that? So it's... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine holes. Nine ways in. But the eyes, they are blocked though, aren't they? Although well, it's a hole, it's not really a hole. Because it's. It's got a, a plug, isn't it? <laughs> I know the eyes aren't really plugs, but. Yeah, so maybe they're not classed as holes, but. I'm just thinking maybe my ear holes are a little bit bigger than they should be. Which is why the head, the headphone things, you know, the ones that go inside your ear, keep falling out. So I got some, probably about six months ago, I don't know, it's quite a while back, I got some wireless ones. And you know, use Bluetooth take you know to connect it to the phone. And they seem to be fine. And then I'm walking down the street and they're falling out. I thought like, what? So I was thinking it was the wire and I was somehow like um 
maybe pulling them out you know the wire was pulling them out like it is but now I've got no wire connected which means I really don't want them falling out like it is because they land on the floor unlike the others with the wires that land they dangle around uh, probably right, dangle around my ankles um, I get fed up with things dangling around my ankles so it's nice to you want to keep everything tidy so I, I want want things tucked up I don't want that's why I got rid of the wired ones because I thought if I put the um, because I don't want to start tripping over it Uh, I've had enough of that in the past so I thought if I just put the the wireless ones in my ear well not not both in my ear just one in each ear and they'd stay but they didn't even being indoors I mean they're really good quality and everything and but they were just I've got them on the catalogue so I'm still <laughs> I'm still paying them off but I stopped using them because I had to end up getting some headphones because I, it's, it's more of a reason of how can I block out the sound the constant sound of the traffic and people talking and all that stuff when I'm out so I've got some headphones and they're noise cancelling and they're really really good it was my I say my Christmas present to myself but actually it was a Christmas present paid for paid for by by some people that um, sent me some PayPal uh, gift so with that and some of my own money as well I kind of bought these so that was my that was my Christmas present to myself and I would say because you know some people say oh there's this like uh, buyer's remorse and stuff and oh I wish I hadn't bought that and yeah I can relate to that there's a few things I've got around here that I'm just like why did I why did I buy that But I make use because I don't have much in the way of possessions, and I kind of make use of most of the things that I've got. Like the tablet, laptop, the um, the Amazon Echo thing I've got. So I use it every day. It might just be to sort of find out what the time is, or what the temperature is, or. Um, or a question you know um, just some random thing that I'm thinking about so okay how old is the celebrity that I'm thinking of you know that kind of thing so, and it's an instant answer and it's like quite cool but I'm thinking you know as far as things that are really really have got the most benefit from personal benefit apart from my books if it wasn't for my books that I bought and read when I've got them although I've replaced them from old times you know because I lost all my books a few years back but I've replaced a lot of the important ones I have read them you know years and years and years ago back in the 90s some of them and that's what led me to where I kind of led me to you know get into hypnosis and to try and use it to help people so even though I might not be reading them regularly they're on the they're on the shelf they're available to be read but they're they're a part of my life. They're, the content are in my brain. Part of I feel it's like part of my nervous system, you know. And the books I've read on uh, what's his name, Carl Rogers. Of course, that was part of my course. It was when I went to do the degree. The first two years was for the diploma. So basically, the first first year was a certificate. 
second year was a diploma, third year was a degree with honours. I mean, it wasn't, I signed up for the three year degree, but I could have signed up just for the first two years to do, to get the diploma in person-centered counseling and then chosen at the end of that, if I was successful, whether or not I wanted to do the third full year uh, to go on and gain the what I needed to get the honours degree. So each year was worth 120 UCAS points, I think it is, because you need 360 in all to have an honours degree. So for the first two years, I was studying person-centred counselling, as well as you know mental health, um, a bit of sociology, um, like count, not just person-centred counselling as well, other types of counselling, psychotherapy, things like that. And so, yeah, Carl Rogers was a very important part of my life because that was what we, the first two years was based upon his therapy. You know, ultimately, because I became a person-centred counsellor, a diploma with that. And then the third year went on and we were no longer, we were no longer studying person-centred counselling, but much more other types of therapy, other types of counselling, and again, mental health. And that's what it was about. It was more about the uh, academic side of things, really, rather than the practical side, which was the first two years, especially the first year, very practical based. And then the second year, well, they were both, yeah. The third year wasn't, it wasn't so about practical. It was very much about, because yeah, by the end of the, by the end of the second year, I'd qualified as a counsellor. I'd done all my hours, done all the counselling hours I needed to do. So the third year, it was just all about academic stuff, all about essays and the final dissertation, which was, uh, I think it was a 50,000 word dissertation, I think. I can't even remember what I talked about or what I wrote about. don't remember. Isn't it weird? I really don't remember. But it must have been about something. And I passed. I got a, a... Actually, I passed every bit of coursework I did. But I got um, minimal grades on some of them because I handed it in late. But I did pass everything, which I was very surprised with because uh, academics wasn't really my... my strongest swoot you know I kind of focused much more on the practical side of things I, f I concentrated on counselling you know all the aspects of counselling including um, being a client as well so I was in therapy the whole time pretty much I think that I was at university once a, once a week, I'd have therapy, and I was learning from my counsellor. That makes sense. Learning how she did things, and probably, I say probably. I, I imagine, guaranteed, I was mimicking her in some ways when I was a counsellor, and um, because she was really lovely. Uh, really kind, very, really attentive, and I wanted, I, I'm just guessing this, it's such a long time ago, but if I remember rightly, I wanted to be as good as she was, and to give, well yeah, just to be as good as she was, so and also I used to practice with, um, with sessions with people, other students. So we'd practice doing client sessions with each other. 
as well as like being the client, being a therapist, sw- you know, swapping over, as well as seeing, I don't know, six, two, six, six to eight clients a week, probably, uh, at the university. And they used to get free therapy with students. So yeah, that was uh, that was good. But then the third year, whilst I was actually at university, uh, doing the, the third year of my degree, I started to work as a therapist because I was qualified. I had my uh, counselling diploma, so I started my own business as a counsellor and I was working with a charity as well so I didn't perhaps give as much attention to the academic side of the third year as I as I could have done you know I think I'd have benefited more I'll tell you what it was it was just I didn't really didn't really have huge self-confidence in myself academically but now having done it I finished it over t- it's 10 years ago now which is weird but I know I could do it again because once you've done it you realise yeah I could do it and I think I wouldn't want to do that course again but if I was going to do another degree I reckon I'd get higher well I would get higher marks because providing us I hand in the coursework on time I think I'd put more effort in Because now I've got the, I've got a better environment, a better living environment to do the work in. You know, I'm I'm not just in one room the whole time now. I've got my desk. I could work on that. And yeah, I just, I think even just have an Andre. You know, it's it makes a difference. Just the little things. Having a little ferret running around and going to the toilet everywhere. That's all, yeah. Everyone needs that. (laughs) He's fast asleep. He sleeps about... I reckon he sleeps 20... At least 21 hours a day at the moment. And those other three hours is split up. So I've maybe... 10 minutes here 20 minutes there you know so he's he's up and about a few times quite a few times a day but he's not normally awake for any long period apart from when he'll like have a little uh, he's spent some time with his girlfriend in the bedroom which is my old slipper so sometimes he's 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 doing that for about an hour sometimes longer a very attentive lover (laughs) yes honestly I'll come into the bath um, the the bedroom sometimes I'll turn the light on I don't realise he's in there and he's underneath the chair with the slipper in his mouth he's just staring at me He's completely still. He's just staring at me. So I said, oh, sorry. I'd turn the light off and I'd leave him to it. I don't like to interrupt him when he's... uh... Well, I don't like to interrupt him on date night, basically. That's the the thing. (laughs) Date night. So, yeah, I'm going to be... My plan, my plan, 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 plenty, plan, plan, plan is to make not I'm going to make more recordings but I also need to do more studying I feel the need to 
read more up on a few subjects. One would be uh, stress, anxiety and stuff like that. And I'm kind of, I would say I'm fairly knowledgeable from an experiential perspective, my own experience. And also having dealt with people, like personally, with stuff, both professionally and like, as a friend, as well as online. Um, I've had people contact me online and sort of ask for help and stuff. But there's always more to learn. So I, need, I just want to learn more, find more ways that I can integrate that with what I do. I'd also like to learn, you know, just maybe start rereading some of my hypnosis books. And. Yeah, that's that's kind of as far as I'm planning right now, but it's, it's not a bad a bad plan. As far as the website goes, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know. It's uh, if I make, if I put it live back online, I've just got lots of work to do to make everything free again. So I might just not bother. That's <laughs> just kind of... It's not going to make any difference, really, because all of my recordings are still going to be available. There's still going to be new recordings up, uploaded to the podcasts. I get a very minimal amount of people from Facebook and Twitter going to my website a very minimal amount of people from Facebook and Twitter go into the podcasts. Some, but most people that go on the podcasts search for my Facebook after that. And when I close my website, the podcast stats never go down. Sometimes they even go up when I, when I close my Facebook page and stuff. So I'm not, really not difficult to find online. There's a lot of podcast hosts that host my podcasts on there. I mean, Spreaker, Spreaker is the main one, as far as that's where my podcasts actually live, and I pay rent for that privilege. But then they're shared on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher... Pritcher, Litcher, Mitcher, I don't know, all the different ones. Catch, Catbox, Cat, is it Catbox? <laughs> Catbox, Cax, something. Um, it's, there's, there's lots. There's quite a few. I'm also thinking about, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? I'm thinking about not looking at the stats as often as I do because I'm looking at them all day I keep going online and looking and it's I don't know because it's exciting for me I kind of it's just amazing to see that by like 9 o'clock in the morning or sometimes 8 o'clock in the morning 6 even sometimes I've got over a thousand downloads already in the day And then by two o'clock, one or two o'clock in the afternoon, I've usually got at least, usually at least two thousand downloads. This it's is kind of just weird seeing it, and and I like it. I just want the little things that gives me pleasure in life, seeing these the stats. But I'm thinking of stopping myself looking, and just wait until the end of the month and only look at the stats once a month to see how the month's been. But I don't know if I could stop myself. It's, 
it's almost like you know when you get um, I don't know if you get them now but when I was a kid I used to get advent calendars but at Christmas they start on the 1st of December all the way up to Christmas where you'd, you've got 25 boxes a little it's like uh, like a you know it's a, a board or whatever and you stick it on the wall or whatever and it's got it might have a chocolate in it behind each door but there's usually a picture lovely nice little Christmassy picture uh, snow or snowmen or whatever you know and it's Father Christmas and the there's uh and as I said, it's sometimes a chocolate. The chocolate's the hook, really. I mean, but then that's the thing. On the 1st of December, well, actually, it's not even that. Normally, you have it in November, and it's there, sort of waiting to be opened, the first door. And it's really, really tempting to just open all the doors and eat all the chocolates. And I remember when I was a kid, looking at the clock, waking up at night and thinking, oh, it's half past 12, because I'd been in bed since 8 o'clock or in the evening or something. Oh, it's half past midnight. I know what I can do. And I go to the advent calendar and I'd open it up because it technically was the next day. I go down and the whole family would be there all eating their eating their little chocolates I'd look through them, and you could look through the window and you could see all the other lights in the other houses you could see through and they were all eating their little chocolates out there no they weren't I'm making that bit up isn't it really weird as I was imaging that in my head I had a completely different neighbourhood <laughs> than what I actually grew up in. It was almost like an American neighbourhood that I see on TV shows. Nothing like where I, where I lived. Because I lived in a... Well, I lived in a few places, but the main place I lived when I was... from here, yeah, from the age of... nine, or just before nine, to... fifteen was this big old cold house dark and cold it was it was ugh. it was uh, I think the only thing missing was a dungeon seriously it was very very uh, how many bedrooms did it have let's see how many rooms it had I was thinking One, two. There was two rooms, but then my dad knocked it into to one room. But they were still the same size of two rooms, so technically it's two different rooms. And they were both used as two different rooms. And they both had doorways, but also an archway you could walk through. Which might have been turned into a doorway. I can't remember. But anyway, there's two rooms there. Two. Bathroom, three a toilet rather on the bottom floor three another room which was like a dining room four and then a kitchen five so it's five rooms on the bottom then upstairs there was one room bedroom bathroom toilet so it's a separate toilet as well as well as a bathroom and a toilet got that many people you need to have we had three at one point we had four toilets because we had an outside toilet but that got turned into well, but that extended it extended the toilet we ex extended the bathroom into the toilet so that we could have a seating area and eat um, in the kitchen No, no matter how nice it was, I always remembered what used to happen in that bit where we were eating. 
Always remember, never could never forget that. It was a toilet, wasn't it? It was always it used to be a toilet. It shouldn't be eating. Ugh. But it wasn't because it was all done nicely, but anyway, so what have we got? How many rooms? One, two, three, four, five. Five downstairs. Then there is one bedroom upstairs. A bathroom. toilet one bedroom another bedroom another bedroom so six rooms on the bottom floor on the, the next floor then upstairs there are one two three rooms so what's that six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen rooms but out of those rooms the bedrooms is one two three four five six seven seven bedrooms so it was just upstairs so there was three floors or the ground floor the next floor and then the, the top floor and the top floor initially How did that work? One, two, oh yeah. Basically, when we first moved in that, to that house, my little brother had the box room, but it was, it was still a fairly good size. But he had his, he lived in there. He was only little. He was only like a year old or something. And I lived in, the, the parents lived in a room next to him. And I lived in a room, I slept in a room next to them. Um, which was quite a big room yeah it was a big big size room and that actually was quite bright big windows and there was yellow on the wallpaper or yellow it was yellow on the walls anyway and but then my brother and upstairs my two brothers lived And there was a big room where we had a, like a it was our playroom. So we had like a record player up there. There was a, we had a snooker table, not a full size snooker table, but it was a, it was a decent size. And the um, a tennis a tennis table that that actually fitted on top of the snooker table or was it a pool table I don't know pool table snooker table we had snooker balls and pool table and pool balls um, kept getting wet Whee! no it wasn't that kind of pool so we had a table tennis table as well and some chairs and stuff so yeah that was the, like a playroom and then as my little brother got old enough, he moved into my room. My oldest brother moved into the playroom, so it was no longer that. Um, and I moved into my oldest brother's room. Yeah, so... And that was a weird room because it was dark. Never got any light because opposite the window was a brick wall. Probably the length of like five foot away. You know, maybe six foot away. You know, it wasn't a big because uh, that's where the alleyway was between the houses. So although we weren't connected to that house. We were right close to it, and it was the width of a gate, you know. That's basically what it was the back gate and a pathway. So I never got any light, no light at all. So I had to left the light on all the time. And I kind of liked it actually, kind of liked that room. Uh, 
and I spent a lot of time reading a lot of time reading and listening to music and stuff like that just the standard teenage stuff so I don't know how old I was so I've got memories of the I don't think I could have been up there that long because I've got memories of the ten table tennis table being up and my oldest brother wasn't in there at that time unless he moved out ah maybe he moved out and then he moved back in again I don't remember such a long time ago but yeah I, I used to quite like um, the I like my room It's fairly quiet up there because both my older brothers they were doing other things you know they are both um, pretty much left school by the time I was yeah by the time I was 14 they both left school so I was upstairs and you know they'd be coming and going and you know just having fun and stuff I suppose and Yeah, it was fairly quiet. I remember, I remember once during my um, period of yeah, I, I was doing karate at that time, and um, and going to the gym and everything. And I remember I had a mirror that was the other side of the wall, um, near my bed. For some reason, it was on the thing near my bed. So I was standing in the hallway just outside my front, not my front door, outside my bedroom door, and I was flexing. I mean, it just would have looked embarrassing. I mean, I was probably about eight stone, you know. It's, but I was flexing my muscles, thinking that I looked like a bodybuilder, because I was trying to be a bodybuilder, but I was never going to be a bodybuilder. But I was, you know, it's like I was just one big muscle. It was, I was muscular. I was little, you know. If that makes sense, it's just I didn't have any fat on me at all. But I didn't have any fat on me at all, anyway. Before I started training, and my brother walked up the stairs and he caught me. And he started laughing at me. I was like, because oh. I was going like trying to look like the Incredible Hulk. Um, the sad thing is Bill Bixby had bigger muscles than I did you know before he turned into Lou Ferrigno you may have to google that if you don't know who Bill Bixby is but he was he was a huge star when the Incredible Hulk was on television, and Luther, we used to saw, we used to say Lutheringo because we couldn't say Lutherigno because it doesn't make sense. Well, it's got to be Ringo, not Rigno. But it was Rigno, Lutherigno. No, Lutheringo. No, Lutherigno. Does it matter? Is he ever going to hear us say his name? We well, make fun of him because he wears a hearing aid. No, I just mean he's never, we're never going to meet him, are we? I'm not going to meet him. I'd love to meet him. You know, I was a huge, huge fan of his for years. And then, you know, especially with the bodybuilding as well. But being the Hulk, I mean, come on. Who wouldn't want to meet the Hulk? Providing the Hulk's not angry. <laughs> you know. Apparently, um, it's time for me to finish now. Time for me to finish now. The um, I, think, I don't know. I heard that Bill Bixby, when he was buried, they put him in an extra big coffin in case he got angry. <laughs> da, 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 da. So I'm going to go. Thank you.
for listening and remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy do something nice for yourself today or tomorrow take care lots of love